Thank you so much, Kika. And now we'll call on Reverend uh, Soshin McMurchy. Soshin began practicing Zen in 1986 at the Toronto Zen Center, coming to Victoria Zen Center in 2007. She received the precepts, Chukai, Chukai, uh, and became an elder of the Zen Center in January 2009 and became a novice priest in 2011. Please welcome Soshin. Sure how to, oh, that's how it works. <laughs> uh, so, um, here I am wearing uh, medieval Chinese garb. I just thought I should let you know that that's what it is. Uh, I'm a, a white uh, colonial a settler in Victoria. And um, I also have been, um, it's, we're, it's in discussion about whether we're taking over Buddhism as well as this land. So, but I have the feeling that Buddhism is just given freely, but I, I haven't really checked that out yet, so I, I've got to find out. <laughs> but here we are. Um, it was really a long journey for me to come to this spot here. Uh, maybe for all of you it's been a long journey too. Uh, and think of um, one thing that I could say in seven minutes, yeah. which uh, I can have ten. <laughs> um, so uh, what I landed on was the uh, really fundamental idea in Buddhism, which is that, and this is how we just generally start out in Buddhism, looking for where the self resides in our being. We've got this self that we love, um, and that we take care of, and that we save, and where is it? Like where? Is it in my head? Is it in my heart? Where is that self? And after a while, uh, you know, you just I've come to the conclusion myself that there isn't actually a fixed, permanent, solid self within me. And that came as quite a shock to me when I kind of did that, you know, mental journey and looked for it. Like, what? I'm, I'm a me. Where is myself? Why isn't myself here? Where did it go? Oh no. So, uh, so I have this fundamental belief now that there is no fixed self in me. Um, and what that is, that is important because what it leads to is another idea which I found really useful because, because I'm colonial, because I come from a, a racist, grasping uh, culture, and I know that I embody all that. Like, I, I know that I'm fundamentally greedy, and, you know, like, I want that extra piece of pie or whatever, and, you know, and I'm used to getting it because I'm white, and I'm um, educated, and I'm well off. Um, don't let me lose my train of thought. Where was that? Um, so it's important to remember that I don't have an actual physical self in me that's myself because what it leads to is a process that we all tend to get to do in Zen or Buddhism, I think, also in general, which is to uh, investigate the fact that we don't have a self and then to deconstruct this thing that we think is our self, which is just a construct. But we go through life and we, we add bits and pieces of structure to, our, to make this self. Like, I'm someone who, who doesn't really like dogs because I got bitten three times for no good reason. Or, you know, whatever it might be, we build ourselves up as an entity, a, a self, and um, if it's not there, then if it's not fixed and, and permanent and solid, then maybe I can deconstruct that. And so that means that maybe I can deconstruct the teachings of my culture, which have told me that I deserve everything because I'm <coughs> female and I'm white and I'm educated. Maybe I can deconstruct the uh, part of me that says that, well, 
you know, we're all here now, we don't really have to worry about First Nations. Um, maybe I can deconstruct uh, the part of me that is re just revolted by some politicians that I won't name because I don't want to go there and give them time. Um, I can, through meditation, because that's the technique I've learned, deconstruct these. And I think that's really important in our day to know that basically, okay, this is another belief. I believe we're all basically um, greedy for ourselves and that makes us racist. We're all a little bit um, unaware of others and that makes us racist. And um, I think that we desperately need a way to first notice this and second change it. And those really deeply held beliefs that come from our cultures, uh, come from our parents, it comes from the stories I was told as a child, and I can see it even now in my elders, who I love, but are, they're broken. Like they're um, un, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, they, they haven't looked at themselves enough to see the effect of their words on others and on little children growing up. And um, so, uh, this to my mind is a really important topic, especially right now, because we all influence each other so much more than we used to because there's a lot of us and because we have the internet and other ways of communicating. And it's a tried and true method <laughs> It's a tried and true method that is uh, like 2,500 years old and it really works. Uh, and I know that probably other religions have this, these methods too. And I think it would be really important and interesting to um, look at what our religions have like this that will help us deconstruct this very damaged self. And that, that's the kind of, um, you know, I mean, it's my dream that other religions have this. If, if other religions don't, then um, maybe this technique would be useful for others. I can end there.